Hello everybody, this is Yasmin from YarkSpiryFantasyArt.com and today I'm actually going to be going over uh, the text tool as well as um, the characters uh, button on the side here that's right next to your uh, panels. So let's start with the panels first though because there's a lot of settings that are actually very useful but you need to be aware of what these settings are. So right now I have my text set to uh, Times New Roman, which is a standard font uh, that's available on any computer. Uh, so this is probably the best font to use if you're trying to get used to the different applications of uh, these settings. Uh, so if you look on the top here, uh, in the characters uh, panel here, uh, you have a little drop down menu where you can change the font, uh, which is obviously pretty useful. I have some customized fonts myself, uh, but for the example that we're going to do, um, we're going to stay with Times New Roman. Now you do have the option to, uh, which not too many people are aware of, um, you can, if you happen to know what the font was called, uh, like for instance, I tend to use the Papyrus font fairly often, uh, you could actually type that in and it will automatically fill it up and then change the font for you. Uh, so that's a really good tool to have um, because it saves you a lot of time if you already know uh, what you're trying to do. So I'm just going to change that back to Times New Roman because I don't want to change this. Okay, uh, so in here you have, uh, once again, you have a little drop down menu. You have your presets uh, for your font size. Now uh, mine is set to fairly large and this is uh, essentially a customized size. What you can do too is you can also just uh, double click in here and automatically change the size to what you need it to. Um, so that's really useful. In this box underneath uh, the text size, you have an addition. Um, and what this does is it changes your settings uh, for how much space is put between each character. So in this case, I have mine set to zero, so it's the, the normal preset. But let's say I wanted uh, an extra space between the P and the A for some reason. Um, I can change that. So let's just put it as 75. And you can see that the spacing changes between those two letters only. Uh, so this is useful for a couple of reasons. Let's say you're doing graphics and you're trying to uh, get some very interesting letters uh, for your branding or your product. This is an easier way to do that. You can also have the individual letters or certain groups of letters on a different layer. Uh, but this allows you to essentially just copy and paste everything all at the same time and move it in one layer. Uh, so this is where it would be useful. Now on the top right here, um, we're, uh, you're going to look at, it's set to Times New Roman. Um, the type of font is set to regular, but I have some options here. I can set it to italic, bold, and bold italic. Uh, so these are all essentially settings that you would find in WordPad. However, uh, in WordPad, these are all separate attributes that you can change interactively. Um, and you can intermix uh, how these behave together. Uh, in Photoshop, it's a little bit different. They're saved as a separate preset. So because Photoshop is not um, a word editing software, it's a more of a editing software in general for photography and for text. Uh, so I'm going to keep this to regular uh, for now. And if you look up here, I can change the spacing in between uh, the top two rows. So let's say I have this in a, on a different row here. Okay, so this, this button here, what it does is it actually changes how much distance is between the two rows. Uh, so if this distance is too small, it will cause an overlapping to occur. Now to show you this, I'm actually going to uh, just click and drag with my left mouse button uh, once I have my cursor on top of the symbol. And what it does is it allows me to dynamically change the properties that I want. So you can, so you can see it's, uh, if I move it left to right, it changes uh, the spacing in between the text. Set it back to auto. Uh, now if I change this one here, you'll notice that it changes the width and spacing of the overall text. So if I want the text to take up more space in my document, uh, I can easily do that just by using this button. And the nice thing about that is it doesn't change 
uh, the text size, it only changes the spacing in between the text. So it's only affecting the spacing itself. Now if I go up here, uh, what this button does is if I, I can actually uh, stretch out or uh, crunch in my text to what I would like. And this button here, what this one does is it... Um, now in order to see what this button does, I'm just going to select just one of the letters here. Uh, you'll be able to see the difference a lot more if I do that. Uh, so I'm essentially going to make the X into a lower case. Lower case or a uh, higher case. Uh, so what it's doing is it's uh, changing the position in relation to that line um, for that one letter. So do that. Now if I go here, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to stretch out the width of uh, my overall text. So I'm just going to select everything here. I'm just going to stretch that out. As you can see, it really stretches out the letters. Um, this is, once again, useful if you're trying to uh, fit in a certain amount of space and you want it to take up as much space as possible. So here you have the color option. If I left click here, I, I'm able to actually uh, select the colors I want. So maybe I don't want red, maybe I want a really dark red or a really dark uh, purple. I can change the colors of my text just by doing this. Now I'm just going to undo that because I uh, don't want to keep that setting. Um, now for this here, uh, just so you have a reference point, I'm just going to change the bottom uh, page word here. Uh, so what this does is it essentially creates a, a, not a real bold, but it imitates a bold setting. Uh, so it makes it a little bit chunkier and it's increasing the thickness. If I turn that off, I can also make it more italic. So it's going to tilt the overall text to one side. I can actually change all of the letters that I already have here to uppercase if I want, just by clicking this one button. So by doing this, it automatically changes all the letters for me. I don't have to do, I don't have to retype, I don't have to do any of that in this. I can just click this button and it automatically does it for me. Now this one's interesting because essentially what it does is anything that you already have in caps, it will keep in cap, uh, but anything that's in lower case will stay that size but become a cap as well. So if I click this, you'll see what I mean. So the P is larger, but then the rest of the page word is actually smaller in size, but it's still all in caps. I can also, I'm just going to select the portion here, I can change this to be an uppercase word. So just by clicking here, it automatically changes uh, the rest of the word to an uppercase. I can do it also a lowercase as well, quite easily. I can underline my text. As you can see, I've just underlined that. Let's click off here so you can see it. I'm just going to undo that. And I can also add a line going across. So if I uh, want to scratch out something for any reason, um, I can easily do that just by clicking this button here. Uh, then you have your language settings. Uh, I'm not going to change this because uh, it's obviously the correct setting for what I use. Um, and here I can change whether or not I want the text smooth. So it smooths out the lines and vectorizes them a little bit more. I can make strong letters, um, set it to none so it doesn't do anything. Uh, strong tends to be the, the default for Times New Roman, so I'm going to keep that for now, but you do have a couple of different settings that you can change. Okay, so in this uh, button you also have a second one uh, which covers essentially these two buttons on the, the top here. So if I click here, I can change my paragraph settings. So let's say I want, I don't want everything center aligned. Um, perhaps I want it all aligned to the left. I could do that just by doing this, do the right, center. Um, I could change if I want to have a tab, I can indent it. Um, so let's say, okay, so these all cause different types of indents. So the first one here uh, will indent all the text from the left hand margin. So that's the reference point that it's using uh, for this indentation. Uh, now, 
if I select this page word as well, uh, this one here, what it actually does is it indents the word and text based on the first line that you have. So if I change this to a uh, center line, I'm just going to change both of these to the center line. Okay, so these are both uh, center aligned right now, but if I change this index, it's, it's going to change it based on that top line. So it doesn't matter that I have it center aligned, it will still indent it for me. Okay, now for uh, this one here, it as a space before the paragraph. Um, I don't find this one useful, uh, so you're probably not going to use it yourself. Uh, it's good to know that it's there, but essentially I haven't found any really good use for it. Uh, so I don't recommend you use that actually. Uh, for this one here, uh, it will indent based on the right hand margin instead. So instead of using the left hand margin as your base, it will indent based on the right hand margin instead. This one, it actually adds a space after the paragraph. So once you're done writing your paragraph, it will automatically add a space uh, for you. Uh, once again, I, I don't use these uh, too often. Um, I don't find them overly useful. Uh, these are essentially, I use the first uh, two rows of this. I'm already set to uh, the text tool, which is this tool here. Uh, if you look on top, you'll also notice that I have additional uh, preferences I can set. I can actually click this button here and what it does is it actually changes the orientation of the text. So if I click that, it changes it to go from top to bottom. Change that again, it changes it back. Uh, once again, you could change your text type here. You can also set it to regular or whichever one you want. You can change your size. Uh, you can also once again, change the thickness. Um, so if I, if you want, you can also change how this text is displayed, if how the curves occur, and all that. Um, now you also have your parag your basic paragraph options here. You have your color swatch once again. Now, uh, what you can do is you can click this button, and what it's going to do is it's going to bring up a, a warp text option. So I can preset it to um, arc in the lower, so we'll add an arc uh, to that text here, and it causes it to curve and deform according to what I want, but I can change also it uh, from horizontal to vertical if I want. Um, horizontal does work better because of the current direction that my text is facing. Um, you can also change how deep the setting is set, the amount of distortion, so you have a lot of flexibility in what you can actually achieve with this text. Now there's quite a few options here. Uh, each of these will have uh, different settings. Um, they do tend to use the same three basic uh, scrollers though. So once again, you can change how much uh, that's uh, bending, uh, how much it's actually distorting, uh, based on a variety of uh, uh, settings. So this is a, a pretty useful tool. Um, most people probably won't end up using this, uh, to be honest. Um, there's not too many instances when you would need this, uh, unless you were going for a very specific style. Uh, but generally, the more you distort it, you run the risk of people not being able to read it, so it's something to keep in mind. So don't go overboard if you start using this. I, as you see, can see, I never use this, actually, in my... Uh, in any of my documents. I don't find it's necessary in order to do so. So um, that's text and the paragraph options that you see on these two buttons. Uh, and that's it for this week's video. Um, next week I'll be covering actually uh, the brush presets as well as uh, your brush. So there's quite a bit to cover in next week's video. Um, and I hope to see you guys soon. So thank you and take care.